This week on Sea Lifter Show, we talk about nutrition. Yeah. Hi! We're back. Okay, we are back this week with the Cause Lifter Show. Um, yeah, so this week we're talking about nutrition. Uh, you probably saw me eating ice cream. If not, you will later. It was very amazing ice cream. It was very good. I'm not a huge ice cream fan, so for me to say that. Yeah, ice cream's kind of my thing. Yeah. It's your thing. My thing's chocolate. There's chocolate in the ice cream. There is. It probably helps. Anyways, so um, we are back. We're going to talk about nutrition. And this week, your kind of big thing you have been thinking about is how to stay on track. Yes, because that's a big issue with so how do you stay on track? everybody. Um, well, unfortunately, I learned pretty quickly going into the whole like paleo thing, eating thing that my willpower is not exactly what I would like it to be. No. Because I'm pretty good at out of sight, out of mind until I tell myself I'm not actually allowed to have it. Like, if I'm allowed to have it. Oh, you're one of those people. I am one of those people. It's as soon as you label it, I must have it. It's terrible. So, I, I pretty well learned within the first year that if I was like, alright, I'm gonna buy this packet of Oreos, but I'm gonna hide it under my cabinets, oh. cabinets, whatever, until by Friday, it, and it's gonna be all good. And it somehow would have been, eh, let's just say one a day. <laughs> just, just one every now and then, you know. It... You know, I mean, if you eat, like, one of those little tiny dove squares. And it's you know? post-workout, so it's fine. Yeah, it's like post-workout carbs, it's a thing. But, yeah. no, so so that didn't work out well. And then I would realize myself, like, okay, finally stopped buying those, now I'm eating the healthier snacks, like, you know, trail, trail mix is kind of my treat because it has those little dried fruit and I buy the type that has like little baby mini chocolate chips in it. So you still get some of that chocolate but without being real horrible. I love how you go baby chocolate chips. Like you're justifying that you're eating chocolate what? chips. There's a little baby mini one. It's better. Anyways. So, but then I'd like be done bring the whole bag over with me while I was sitting and I'm one of those compulsive like when I study I just kind of like mindlessly keep yeah, you're a snacker. You don't my hand eat in the bag. Yeah, which I'm sure some of our listeners identify with, especially when it's like Sunday football comes on and you just sit down with the bag of chips in front of the TV and somehow by the end of the first quarter they're all gone. Yeah, and the saddest part is when they're gone, or when your salsa's gone before your chips are gone. That's just, that's depressing. It's better the other way around because then you can just go get more chips. Well, that doesn't really help much. Just personal experience. Yeah, so, so one of my things is, Learn your weaknesses and don't have them around, basically, or have someone to keep you on track with it. Like, lock it away somewhere that they don't tell you. And when it comes to if you are going to snack, know your portion sizes. Know, like, if it says there's this many protein, fat, uh, carbs in a thing of trail mix, it's normally either one ounce or a quarter cup, depending on the company. Measure it out. Yeah. Like, I bought a food scale at the beginning of the year, and I use that thing daily religiously. I know you do, too. I do. Well, I use it once a week. So, I meal prep. Uh, that's my kind of preferred method. So, I'll buy... Yeah, like that's really helpful, too. Two rotisserie chickens, like I just got, and then I'll just cut them up four ounces for every container, and <clears throat> that's basically it, and throw in four ounces of... Um, <laughs> rice, and I'm pretty much good to go. You dropped your pen. I did. It's okay. Okay. I got it back now. Okay. Um, but, and so that's usually what I'll do. Uh, it's pretty simple. It takes away stuff. And it kind of takes away the option to cheat, because one thing yeah, I found sure. is, like, especially me. <laughs> Anyways, especially me, um, my big thing is, like, <laughs> we went to the grocery store today. After working out where I am, mm -hmm. and I was hungry because I hadn't eaten yet today. Oh my gosh, you were so bad. And I was just looking at everything. He tried to pick up like everything. We're going to get um, Arizona tea because you decided you just really wanted that, which is right across from the chips, and he's just staring at it. Yeah. He's like, no, walk away. You cannot have the chips. Yeah. But then there's this amazing salsa at the front. And anyways, um, so. That's an issue I have, and so if you meal prep, then first of all, don't go shopping, especially when you're meal prepping for, you know, while you're hungry. But when you meal prep, it's like, 
it's there. It's in a container. You just pull it out, throw it in the microwave. It's done. Yeah, and I mean, it takes. A, it really does take away excuses because I mean, think about it. when are you most likely to like screw up? When you gotta make a choice. N not necessarily when you have to make a choice. When you're like really, really busy. You yeah. know, you're at school all day, you're at work all day, or some combination of the two, and you have like a 20 minute window in between those in which to grab lunch. Okay, well if you haven't pre-made lunch, then that means you have to go out and buy it somewhere. Yeah. Options for like really healthy lunches, especially fast, just really aren't out there. And for dinners too. Or even if you just like, you don't really have a time limit, but you finally finish the day at like 5 o'clock and you know, it's been a long day, you're tired, you don't want to go home and cook fish, even though it takes like 5 minutes, because I get it, I've been there. and those. Yeah. Those are the days where, like, you're driving past that Burger King and being like, that's a quick option. <laughs> yeah, it's quick. It's usually cheap. Um, so, yeah, I, I like to meal prep. I like to... I notice, so here's what will happen. This happened before. I don't think I've told you. Well, it was, like, three weeks ago. Um, and I was starving. And I didn't want to come up here. I wasn't meal prepping for, like, half a month. Yes. I know. It, well, this is the result. So I was like, I'm starving, and there's a Papa John's in the downstairs of one of our buildings. So I go to the Papa John's, and I get a Cinepie. Oh, my god! Which is as big as a personal pizza. And it's just cinnamon sugar coated in, like, icing. I wolf that thing down. I could not do anything for the rest of the day. I had, like, a diabetic coma that I passed out for three hours. I woke up just feeling sweaty, and I just couldn't think clearly, and it was just terrible. That's concerning. Which, for someone like me, I realize super, you know, stuff like that just knocks me out. Like, I can't do anything. But if, you know, I start my day off with some good coffee, I have, you know, some cashews or some almonds or something, I've got bacon and eggs, that kind of stuff, I'm more productive. And I don't end up in a diabetic coma waking up feeling terrible. Yeah. So, yeah, make sure you avoid that. Also, having someone else, because now, if I ever feel like that, I just text her. Or vice versa. And he gets those texts all the time. Yes. It's like, I really want chocolate today. Don't eat chocolate. No. But, I mean, that's, that's important. You should have a training partner in the gym. You should also have a training partner for your diet. Hopefully it's the same person that makes life easy. For sure. Because um, if they're not the same, a lot of times they tend to misunderstand and they're like, oh man, if, you know, if you're just feeling it for one day, it's okay, just, you know, don't do it again. You know, I actually heard, um, I was following someone on Instagram and they actually had a really great idea for when they have cravings and basically what she said is, you know, if she has a craving, she doesn't just absolutely put it away, but she says, okay, if you still want this tomorrow, you can have it tomorrow. Yeah. Because normally by the next day, that craving was gone or, you know, she'd kind of like been able to calm back down where she wasn't quite in that same state where she could be a little bit more disciplined. And, you know, the longer you think about something, normally the more you're able to be logical and rational about it than just like that um, impulse want it now. Here's my key. Vanilla extract in your coffee. I put vanilla extract in my protein shakes. It... It helps with the craving. Now, I don't know if it causes any crazy hormonal insulin response or anything like that. But it helps. It helps me on the mornings where I'm like, man, it's like it's Thursday. I've been eating perfectly well all week. And I'm just like, I just want something. Just throw that in the coffee real quick. And it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. Vanilla extract is like my favorite thing. Especially like it's one of the ones that's worth buying the good vanilla extracts for. I would just buy the cheap ones. If you're a guy, you really don't care about Okay, the so guys can't tell, but I have Mexican vanilla, so. I can't tell. I have horrible taste buds. I should never be a chef, but. But, yeah, that's something I do. Like, one of my favorite things to do for a treat is I'll mix up some sludge, which if you don't know what it is, I believe it was Mark Lobliner. He's got a lot of videos on it. He does yeah. a lot with sludge with this stuff. You basically just mix a scoop or two of protein powder with enough water to make it to, like, more of a batter like consistency yeah and then so i'll do that then and it's normally vanilla and then i'll put vanilla extract on top of that so it's really nice and sweet vanilla -y, and then mix that with um maybe a tablespoon of trail mix 
and it's a really nice sweet treat that kind of like pushes me through those cravings. Yeah. But this is not to be done every day, no. only when it's like you're going crazy. Uh, and another big thing we want to hit on today is don't kill yourself. Well, don't beat up on yourself <laughs> if you fall off the wagon. Don't kill yourself anyways. It's just that. But, well, yeah. I mean, it's it's one of those things where I'm, I'm a psychology minor. I study this kind of stuff. It has actually been studied and proven that when you fall off the wagon, you're more likely to go, like, extremely overboard. Whether than, even if you set up a Vice Friday system, you do better. Because, you know, it's just like that one lot of time where you have X amount of sugary stuff. You probably feel bad for that evening, but it's totally worth it. And then you're fine. You don't have to do it for the next week. But people that are like have these really, really strict constraints on themselves being like, I can't have any sugar for two months, you know, or something like that. And then if something happens where even if it's not them totally losing their cravings, they go over to a friend's house and all they have is like junk food and they eat some. And then they just tend to be like, oh, well, you know, I've already messed up anyways. Might as well just go off the deep end and have all this stuff. And I'll just start again on the week. Yeah, day. you got, you got to be able to pull yourself back and go, okay. You know, I a little bit of water came through the dam, but I'm not just going to open it up and let it all flood. Yeah. I'm going to do some damage control. We're going to get stuff under control. And sometimes if I'm able to catch myself like that, I'm even tighter on my diet for the next, yeah. you know, up until that Friday. If I don't, then it's just, it turns into a cinnamon pie and a nap. And, yeah. And, and that's where our accountability partner comes in handy, too, because you can go and be like, Man, I really like I messed up. I know it's the middle of the week and I wasn't supposed to, but I went over to my friend's house and they had these cupcakes sitting out and I had like three of them. Six. He had six yesterday. True story. It was Friday, birthday. It was. It's all good. Yeah, we've both been a little bit bad. This is probably not the best time for us to be like hammering nutrition saying like we're awesome because it's my birthday was, this was awesome. a right. week ago. And his birthday was a few days ago. So we've both been a little bit like Birthday celebration, woo! It's coming back under control. It is. Yeah, this next week's going to go back to normal. Um, so... Keep track. Yes, keeping track. I'm trying to read my own notes. My handwriting is <laughs> not the best sometimes. I can read them from here. Well, I also have contacts that are three months old. And I can't get off to read his notes? She's standing on the box. Yes, this is what happens if I step off the box. So we're getting back on the box now. Carefully. Oh my gosh! Okay, we're good. Anyways. I'm only allowed to stay on the corners. It's not safe. Hey, what you doing there, Will? Think about nutrition. And we're back. Oh, um, that unscheduled interruption. Yes. Anyways, we're professionals now. We have commercials. Um, so, eating well for cheap is our next kind of topic of discussion. And right now I'm going to say, if you're a bigger person, if you're 6'3", <laughs> or if you weigh over 200 pounds, uh, I know I don't look it, don't be deceived. Uh, <laughs> it's all down in my legs. Anyways, <clears throat> um, grocery bills are going to be a little bit higher than someone who is 5'8". It's just kind of how it is. Just kind of how it is. When I step off the box. <laughs> yeah. Insane. Just kind of how it is. So, um, but there are ways to kind of make it better. So rotisserie chickens, rotisserie chicken, rotisserie chicken. It is cheaper than frozen chicken because essentially they're thinking they're going to make up the price on buying the mac and cheese and all the other delicious stuff on the side. Be disciplined. Don't do it. <laughs> Uh, some people still do it so they keep it going. But anyways, um, so well, rotisserie chicken is great. I buy two of them a week. Uh, totals about ten bucks, eleven bucks. So that's a lot of meat. Yeah. Not a lot of money. Um, fish. So I know a lot of people are gonna be saying fish is expensive. Stuff like cod. Freezer fish. Yeah, freezer fish like cod, I... frozen. Not too bad. It's about five, six bucks. Usually, no, it's in our more area. Than that. But uh, I mean, like, it, 
I know there's a huge thing about like you want to buy everything fresh, you know. Well, whiting was five six, Collins was seven, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, whiting's a little cheaper. Salmon's always the most expensive of them. Yeah. But I, if that's something that's really really important to you and you can afford for that to be really really important for you, great, go for it absolutely. We're not really in the position where we can afford to buy fresh fish, so the freezer is gonna have to do. I bought like a four pound bag of tilapia, frozen tilapia fillets, at the beginning of the semester. It was, I believe, twelve dollars. I've been working on it for three weeks, and I still haven't finished off the bag. And I have two fillets a night for seven days. Yeah. You know, I'm talking like a full three weeks. Yeah. So that'll definitely supply you. And whenever I buy chicken, I buy six pounds. Unit price: the more you buy, the less that unit price gets. Buying in bulk is amazing. If buying you have a Costco or a Sam's Club, yeah, absolutely do that. Do it. Because basically, you take out what you need for that week. I do about three chicken breasts a week, and I cook that. I take the other three, put them in a freezer bag, put them in my freezer. And that's about 10, 11 bucks, depending on the price of chicken that week per pound. And I don't even have to buy it again the next week. Yeah. So that works out great. I would go to Costco or Sam's Club. I think there's one in Pensacola somewhere. I don't know where it is though. And I think I know where it is, but it's too far away. I have a truck, I get terrible gas mileage. Yes. It saves me money, too. but buy in bulk buy easy stuff like that you know so especially if you're a guy like me and you're let's say really busy with school and you're trying to do a semi professional thing as professional as you can get mm -hmm. with a budget um and all that and working out and trying to have a social life you don't have to waste time cooking with rotisserie chicken if you get fish just throw it in the oven real quick it's pretty easy to do um it doesn't get too expensive as long as you stay basic now i know just from first-hand experience it's hard after a couple weeks like this week i got some arizona green tea that's kind of a little splurge yeah so it wasn't even too bad though it was like 280 something yeah 280 our whole huge thing that we already almost drunk all of yes <laughs> uh <laughs> but yeah it's a way to give yourself a little bit of something kind of like that vanilla we talked about earlier mm -hmm. that you can put in like i put in my coffee sometimes um yes i still do coconut oil on my coffee but throw vanilla there too yeah i know we both like the um clear water because it's yes, carbonated water flavor has no calories no macros in any way so if sometimes you just need a break from water or yeah. you're kind of craving that carbonation great option right there and him going back to talking about time and use of rotisserie chicken like that. If you're like me, like I love to cook, my go tos, because I, I don't really like the rotisserie chicken, I'm not a dark meat kind of girl. I don't like the dark meat chicken. There's a lot of white in there. There is, but then I still end up throwing out part of the chicken because I won't eat oh, okay. it. Oh, okay, yeah. It doesn't sense. really make sense. But oven, I bake things in the oven all the time. You prep it, throw it in the oven, don't have to worry about it until the timer day. Other favorite thing of mine, crock pot, all day long. Yeah, I don't have one, but I need one. Yeah, and mine is um, programmable, which was a gift and is like the best gift ever because I use it all the time. You put it in for the amount of hours and high, low, whatever, and as soon as that's done, even if you're not home to check it, it automatically switches to warm so that I can literally throw everything in there before I go to work or school. Yeah. And when I get back, it's not going to be spoiled because it finished cooking like forever ago. Yeah. It's, uh, it's what one of my best friends does. He does that. He's really busy. He works two jobs. Um, and he throws it in in the morning. It's done when he gets home. And then in the refrigerator, when he leaves again for work, he puts it out, puts it on warm, and yeah. it works. And using those kind of stress-free methods not, not only help to keep you on track and keep you on budget, it just makes it so much easier throughout the week when you don't really see it as a burden anymore, when you see it as a little bit easier to eat healthy well yeah it's like if you listen to my kind of latest uh psychologically <clears throat> i guess psychological performance um intrigue is decision fatigue mm -hmm. and yeah. so you know at the end of a long day have it set up have meal prep have something in a crock pot have something like that where you, because you're so decision fatigued i guess uh from work or school or whatever it's just easy. You don't have to think about it. So mm -hmm. you don't have that chance where you're just going to grab the cupcake. Um, or the pizza out of the freezer. <laughs> that'll be gone by, by the time the weekend's over. Don't worry. <laughs> weekends, I kind of let loose. But. Well, because here's mm -hmm. what happens. 
basically like we're not together every single weekend the weekends we're not together i don't know about him at least for me like i don't even cheat really obviously by that look he does but so when i'm here it's it's a little bit worse than just your normal vice spray but i mean there's two three weeks in the middle i'm like flat out clean so it balances i cheat every weekend um i don't really see it as cheating like it i don't think it sets me back no, no, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. But, so, you know, have something, and don't make it to where, like, you're sitting over a stove all day cooking, because I've done this, because I try to get fancy, like, I love reducing sauces and cooking stuff in the sauce, or it is, like, it just makes it taste good, it gets that kind of sticky orange chicken type thing going on, yeah. which I love, but if I meal prep that, all right, so if I prepare that for the entire week, I'm standing over the stove for like four hours. So bill for electricity, that's huge. Um, and time, because you just get tired after it. You're just like, you know, it's, yeah. it's sucked. Another like caution, if you do like doing that, and I do too, but if you're reducing sauce and you throw that sauce onto the chicken, that's another source of Yeah, you gotta count that. That you really don't think about. Cause those sauces typically have a really good amount of carbs in them from what you have to put in them. So that's that's one of those things. Yeah. Just to caution you. Yeah, you gotta watch out for that too. Um, but yeah, just don't make it so hard on yourself. Break the game so that you're going to win. You know, quote Tim Ferriss, great guy. <laughs> yeah, but you, I mean, you do have to be really careful about when we talk about tracking everything and me being serious about logging everything you put into your mouth. It's those little things like if you have a whole pack of ketchup with your chicken, ketchup has carbs in it. You know, not that it, it also has fat and all that. And fat, stuff, yeah. yeah. But you know, all these things add up and if you only count the base meat that you're eating, the vegetables or you don't count any condiments or anything like that, and you're still wondering why you aren't getting the results you want, that might be part of it. Could be, could be a piece if you're could just barely off. It. Yeah. yeah, it's, um, you know, okay, so our last topic for today is pre and post workout meals. Um, so I've come from kind of a traditional sport background, played football, and we would have this big dinner with pasta right before oh, the game. Sorry about that. I could smell it walking down the hallway. Yeah, you know, it was, it was <laughs> huge. Um, I don't agree with that, obviously, anymore. Um. So, in my opinion, and I have not finished my exercise science degree, just getting to my um, real deep stuff with pre and post, but my two cents on this is, I don't really care too much about pre-workout stuff. Um, you know, if you want to take a pre-workout supplement, for most workouts, I caution against it, just because of what I've seen, that, you know, in a Metcon, you can't bring your heart rate back down, so Man. you just die. I did that once <laughs> you just hit that wall and there's no coming back. Um, uh, Pre-workout food and fuel, like, you know, I'm not one for training on an empty stomach, even though I do it a lot. I don't like to do it, but, you know, I feel best on uh, eggs and bacon. I work out in the morning. That's when I feel best. Uh, that's really it for me on pre-workout. What do you think? What about, because I know we talked about when it's best to take a protein shake right before, to get that maximal. Well, effect. so most people will say you take it immediately after a workout. You've got this anabolic window, window of gains um, to take it. So that's a good start, right? And the whole idea is the earlier you take it in that time frame, the more it will be utilized for what you want it to be utilized for. Um, and not stored or anything like that, but actually shoved into the muscle and everything like that. So that's a good place to start. But I think um, and the first people to really bring this to my attention were the three fuel guys because they were talking about taking it, taking their protein shake, their recovery shake, before or in the middle of you know, let's say a long run, you know, a lot of them are endurance guys, um, or before a workout or something. And I think that's actually the best way to go. So a lot of people will push back on this and say their stomach doesn't feel good, 
or I feel like they're gonna throw up. Um, you know, in my experience, yeah, you have a little bit of that at the beginning, but then you'll get over it after a week or two. Yeah. Like you just won't feel it anymore. Um, and because I was one of those people who I used to enjoy training on an empty stomach at five in the morning. Mm. And then some other friends of mine opened my eyes to the fact that I wasn't actually performing very well compared to when I ate. Um, yeah. So I think you should have something in you. Uh, I think the best thing is to have your post-workout shake, like be finishing it right as you're, you know, getting to the gym a little bit early, stretching out, maybe your hamstrings or your um, hip flexors are tight from sitting all day. You should be finishing it right about then and then jump into your workout because it's got to digest, right? So you've got all this time. If it's in your system right after you work out, you still got the 30 minutes to an hour that's got to digest. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you get it in like right when you're starting, now it's in there and you're in there sooner. So that effect of getting it in there when you want it so it is more beneficial is heightened. Okay. So that's the way I look at it right now. Obviously, that's subject to change, but... Everything. There's always new research coming out. You, well, yeah, there is. And there's also anecdotal stuff. Like, I like to run experiments on myself. Which is not the worst idea. And I, I watch other people run experiments. Like, the thing I said about pre-workouts, I watched two guys not take it, two guys take it. Two guys who took it just bombed. Like they could not get their heart rate back down. They were just breathing heavy the whole time, just racing. One. The other guys, it was like in every two minutes on the minute, like thrusters and toes to bar or something like that. And the other guys, when they stopped, were able to just settle down, calm back down, then ramp back up. And so you look at sports like running. Fastest guy is not the fastest guy to contract. It's the fastest guy to relax so you can contract again. Mm-hmm. So take that approach. It's you know look at Rich. You know the best performers aren't the guys who can just blow out real quick. It's the guys who can blow out real quick, but then also deregulate really fast and then come back again. Um, that's really important. Everyone focuses on that explosion of you know get through the thrusters, get through the rope climbs. Okay, that's great. But then how quickly can you drop back down so you can then come back up? Because you can't stay up here. So how quickly can you come back down before you have to come back up and do handstand walks? Mm-hmm. You know, like make use of those precious seconds. Okay. So what about the post? What about all these post-workout carbs I'm hearing about? That's, that would be the shake. So a lot of people, just for simplicity's sake, will do... Uh, protein shakes are just protein. A shake... Um, some people, so with the stuff you have, a lot of people will mix like dextrose in it. The or more, mix it with coconut water. The more I listen to guys experimenting, like the three field guys, the more I'm starting to question that. Um, so the average or the typical post workout ideal meal, meal will be half protein, half carbs. So you have a plate, half of it is meat, the other half is rice or something like that Mm -hmm. um same weight obviously so you know eight ounces eight ounces whatever you want to do and that's usually the thing people do um if you're trying to gain weight uh milk is great if you can take it Um, i love milk if you need to take enzymes to help break it down you know you could do that you could go that route um but, you know, plenty of guys will just shove milk and a protein shake afterwards and they'll gain weight if they're trying to do that. If you're trying to lose weight, obviously don't do that. <laughs> but also don't starve yourself after a workout because that's going to have the opposite effect. Um, once you tell your body that you're in a starvation period, especially after you depleted a lot, it's just going to hold on to everything. So that's one thing. Um, I've heard a lot from different coaches talking about how if you listen to overweight people, a lot of the times they're like, I don't understand. I only eat twice a day. But then you look at the people who are doing that classic eating six meals a day, and that is way better. So I think there is something to your body thinking you're in a sparse food environment versus a food rich environment. And it's like, okay, we can lose this. We can yeah. afford to. So. For sure. So 
That is going to end today's show. Please check out our website, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We just took a, we had fun today's weightlifting session. Took a few pictures out there. I'm working on editing those. They'll be up on the Facebook page, some previews on Instagram. Yes, I think I saw a preview on Instagram right before we started. Mm -hmm. um, if you have any questions, any topic or ideas, hit us up. Sealiftershow uh, at gmail.com is the email. Um, we're out in Pensacola. Come by. Ryan's at the barn where I make a CrossFit. Or I'm a make a CrossFit. She's in Tallahassee at Black Box. Mm -hmm. So come by, hang out, all good gyms, and we'll see y'all later.